What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another PS5 video. So in this video we're going to be taking a look at a few tricks that have been discovered on the PS5 through FTP to allow you to create shortcuts to launch the web browser or the debug settings in a few different ways. Now this is basically a way of bringing back the web browser to the PS5 since we don't have a dedicated web browser app on the PS5 itself. Right now we have to access web pages through the user guide which involves using a custom DNS or proxy server in order to redirect the user guide page to the website that we want. However, thanks to Jose Gonzalez, who has figured out this method with a modified notification database, we can actually create a notification that will allow us to launch any web page that we want. We can have multiple web pages there, like, you know, Google or Alizev's host with the URL redirector, or even your IP address of your computer if you want to set up a site locally or an exploit locally. And you can access whatever website you want from there without having to rely on proxy servers or custom DNS addresses. So, so that's a pretty cool development. Another interesting thing is you can also create shortcuts to the debug settings through the notifications or through the home screen. So you can have an app on the home screen here to launch into the debug settings. Okay, so the first thing we'll take a look at here is how to actually get the web browser back on the PS5, create shortcuts to launch whatever web page we want so we don't have to use the user guide. So in order to do this, the first thing we want to do is make sure you have some kind of notification in your notification section. So you can see here I've got Call of Duty Black Ops 3, which I just in installed and uninstalled to get the notification. So you can install any game you want, uh, just so that you have some kind of notification in there already. And then we're going to go to run the disc player, or you can use Spectre's Exploit if there's an FTP payload within Spectre's Exploit by the time you're watching this. But uh, unfortunately for me, I only have the option to use the BDJ exploit for this right now. So I've already gone ahead and got my FTP client connected to my PS4's hard drive. I've done a full tutorial on setting up FTP for the PS5. So you can check that video out if you want to learn how to set it up. It's down in the video description and in the cards in the top right hand corner. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go into the system data folder and then we're going to go into the PRIV folder and then the MMS folder. In here are all the notifications. We just want to take the notification2.db file and copy it out to our desktop here. And then from there, we're going to use a program called DB Browser for SQL Lite, which can allow us to open these database files. And then you can just click Open Database and Browse for the file, or you can just drag and drop it directly in. And then we're going to go to Browse Data, and we want to grab from a current notification, as you can see here, this is the notification for Black Ops 3's install. We want to grab the user ID here because that user ID is, of course, tied to my user account. So we're going to copy that user ID and then close the database and delete the file. And then we're going to get the notification file from Jose Gonzalez, which you can find right here. I'll have it linked down in the video description. I'll also include a link to Jose Gonzalez's uh, YouTube channel in the video description. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to Notifications Database and extract this database file from Jose Gonzalez, and then we're going to drag this in. Okay, so in here you've got three notifications. So all we need to do is change the user ID to the user ID of my user that we just copied from my own notification database file. That way the notifications will actually show up on my user account when we copy this file back over. We enter that in there, we click Write Changes, and then we close the database. And then from there, we can just copy the file back over. Now, it's a good idea to make a backup. So I'll call this one Backup DB, because you want to have a backup of your original database file just in case it gets corrupted or anything goes wrong. It's a good idea to have a backup anyway, just in case. And then we'll copy this notification file back over, and then we'll switch back over to the one and only PS5, and we'll press the PS button and go to notifications. And you can see here, we have our notifications. Now, I don't know why he's included the auto hen version because obviously there is no homebrew enabler for the PS5. And I think this just points to some random local IP address. So I'm not sure why, what's the, what the actual point is in having that there. You also have a shortcut to the debug settings so you can launch the debug settings from a notification as well. Of course, you still have to have the exploit loaded, in this case, Spectre's exploit that actually loads the debug settings Otherwise, when you try and access it without loading the exploit, um, you'll just get an error message saying something went wrong. It won't take you to the debug settings, so you have to have the actual exploit loaded to use the debug settings shortcut. However, the web browser shortcut should work just fine. So we select web browser and we get a website to go to. So this is Al Aziv's host. 
So when I select it, it'll take me to Alizov's host right there, as you can see. And I can do this from within another app, like we're still in the displayer right now. And I can open up a web page. Unlike the user guide, it actually shows you the sort of title of this of the page that you're on, as well as the URL that you're currently on and the padlock symbol, if it's HTTPS or not. So it gives you all that information. And of course, I can hit the left trigger twice to go to the URL redirector. Um, if you're wondering why it seems kind of laggy right now, it's mainly because I'm still in, obviously, the disc player. So anyway, we can close out of that. So we can customize this even further and make it better. So I'm going to switch back over to the desktop. And I'm going to customize this notification. So I'm going to drag the notification back in. I'm going to delete the top one because this, again, is that auto hen thing, which, you know, doesn't really need to be there. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click and delete record to get rid of that one. So the bottom one is the debug settings. The top one is the web browser. So we want the web browser one. So I'm going to head on over to raw data. So this is the raw data right here. And I'm just going to select this and copy it. And then I'm going to go to a JSON formatter on my computer. So this is jsonformatter.curiousconcept.com. So I'm going to paste that in. I'll leave it in the description and click process. And this will just create this will just create the proper JSON format. So it's going to be easier to actually, you know, look through this file. So we're going to copy this code and we're just going to put it into a notepad document. And then you can see it's formatted properly. So down here you can see you've got actions. So this is the actual links that take you to the site. So you've got action and then you've got the site that it's taking us to here. So we can change this to whatever we want. So I'll call this al Aziv host because that's what it is. So we'll do al dash Aziv host and change it there. And if you want to add more links into that notification for other web pages, you can as well. All you have to do is between these two brackets, if you copy the entire action between these two brackets right here, we can copy it. We can add a comma and then paste underneath and then we get a second one and then we can call this one something else. So for example, I'll have a link to Google as well and I'll change the action URL to google.co.uk. And there we go. And then I can do another one, just add another comma and then copy this, paste underneath right here. And then from here, I can change this to something else. So let's do localhost and I'll change this one to the IP address of my computer so that if I'm ever, you know, doing a local hosted exploit or something on my computer, I'll have a link to go straight to my computer's IP address, which is pretty handy. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy everything, control C, and then head down to the actual database file again. And we'll scroll over to raw data and we'll paste in our edited data right there. And we should be good. So all we'll do now is hit write changes and close database. And then, of course, we can copy that back over to the PS5. OK, so switch back over to the PS5 here. And you can see if I head into notifications and I go to web browser, we now have three links in here. So Al is of host will take me to the same place as before. Of course, I can also go to web browser and I can now go to Google. And then that will take me straight to Google so I can perform a Google search for anything. So I have access to a search engine, a direct link to a search engine. And then also, of course, my computer's IP address, which isn't going to load anything right now because, of course, I'm not currently hosting anything on my computer. But if I was, I, it could take me straight there, which is awesome. So very, very handy little thing right there. And of course, you also have the link to the debug settings if you want to access that. So Jose Gonzalez has also released a link to the debug settings that can be accessed not just through the notifications, but this one is through the actual home page itself. So you can have a app showing up on the home menu that will take you straight to the debug settings, basically another way of doing a shortcut. So we'll take a look at that one as well. So we download the debug settings app database from Jose Gonzalez. We drag that over to our computer. I'll get rid of the notification one just now. And all we need to do is we'll rename this one to DS for debug settings database. And then I'll copy out the app database from my PS5 also to the desktop. And then we'll open both of these in DB browser for SQLite. So this is the debug settings one from Jose Gonzalez. And then we'll open up another DB browser and open up, of course, app DB from my system. And then we're going to go to browse data and I'll head to concept icon info. And then we'll just compare these two first of all. So we'll go to concept icon info so you can see the debug settings are added here in this one. 
So I'm just going to select the whole row by clicking the number, clicking the number one that highlights the entire row. And then I'm going to right click and copy it. And then from there, we can go to this one, this version. And of course, we can insert a new row by clicking this button right here, which inserts a new record into the table. And then from there, we're just going to select the first one here, right click and paste. And then as you can see here, it says the content of this clipboard is bigger than the range selected. Do you want to insert it anyway? I'm just going to say yes. And as you can see, it pastes it in there just fine. So we need to do this with a number of different tables in here. So we've got concept icon info that we just did. There's also concept metadata. So we'll take a look at the other database file here. Go to concept metadata. And as you can see, we also have a record in here. So I'm going to highlight the entire thing, copy it. And then of course, we're going to go to concept metadata in here, insert a new record down at the bottom. And then I'm just going to right click again and paste and click yes. And then that adds the debug settings one in there as well. So we should be good. So next we've got content info. So we go to content info and then we add the record. And of course we paste it in and click yes. And that adds it into that table. So let's go ahead and head to icon info and we'll go to icon info on this one, which should be the last one here. So again, I'll just copy it and I'll try to do it multiple times, make sure it copies properly. And then we're going to go down here, insert a new record. And of course, we're going to paste it in, click yes. And there we go. So that's debug settings added right there. So I'm pretty sure the other tables are just, yeah, nothing in there, nothing in there. So that should be everything. So we're just going to hit write changes, close database. And of course, we'll back up the current database file to our backup folder just in case we get some kind of corruption and we're going to copy our app database back over so once again we'll switch back over to our console and take a look at what we have so we'll go back to the home menu and if we go to games you can see we have debug settings right there so in order to see if this works we're going to have to load the exploit so to load the exploit let's go ahead and head to notifications we'll go to our web browser we'll go to al Azov's host and we'll head to es7in1.site. You know what? I really should have added this to the actual to the actual thing so I could just go straight here. But so we'll go to PS5 and we'll go to get debug settings. Okay, we're good. As you can see, enabled debug settings. So now I can exit out of here. So we can hit the options button, close the page now. And if I go to this debug settings shortcut, you can see it takes me straight to the debug settings. So we've got debug settings shortcut from here. And of course, we also have the notification for debug settings as well, which will also enter the debug settings. So multiple ways of accessing the debug settings. But the thing that I'm, you know, that I think is the most useful is, of course, the web browser. Having multiple links here to go to Google, to go to, you know, uh, any site you want, your host. You know, I could have added and I probably should have added the exploit host, uh, Echo Stretches host, the 7-in-1 host that has the the Spectre exploit implemented so that I don't have to go through Alizov's host with the URL redirector. So I could have a fourth one there to access his site um, or anybody else's host. So I could have multiple hosts on here, search engines, you know, URL redirectors, local host to my computer, all that stuff from right here. Really, really useful stuff. So yeah, there's quite a few things that have been discovered by various people in the community. I'll also be covering, of course, the ability to make PS4 games that are not officially supported on the PS5 like this one and allow them to actually run on the PS5, uh, which is a pretty simple edit that you can do on the hard drive with FTP. So that's another thing I'll probably cover soon. But uh, yeah, the community is discovering new things all the time. That's why I'm putting out these videos like one video a day. Might even have to start doing two videos a day at this point because, you know, it's it's hard to keep up with everything that's happening right now. But uh, yeah, so pretty crazy stuff at the moment. Lots of cool stuff being found. And this is still just a partial jailbreak, of course. We don't actually have a full, a full jailbreak for the PS5 yet. So God knows when that comes out, <laughs> things are really going to pop off. So yeah, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.